It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. Hello again, it's time for another Mike Cohn edition of the Daily Stand-Up. I got another email from Mike and this email starts off asking a question. What do you do when a team stops trying to improve? Now, I thought that was a rather interesting concept because in most cases, teams are looking for continual improvement. They're looking for ways to get better. So when a first team, when a team first adopts Agile, the opportunities to improve are obvious and the improvements make a huge dramatic difference. It's normal for improvements to grow smaller and less obvious over time as the team matures and gets better at what they do. But a really good Agile team will pursue them nonetheless. What an opening. I I couldn't agree more, Mike. I believe that one of the things that I've seen is that some of those teams find joy and happiness in uplifting other teams and mentoring other teams and helping them be successful or really contributing to an internal Agile Center of Excellence. He goes on, when encouraging a team to improve, I find it helpful to point out that the goal is to become better when measured over a longer horizon, not every single iteration. I want to pause there for a second. For ages, I've been saying that it's so important for teams if they're culturally a good fit and if they work well together and if they're being productive and finishing things to allow them to coalesce and stay together. I've seen many organizations that try to time box this and say they can only be together for a certain time or a team will become stagnant if they're together too long. And I wholeheartedly disagree. I think that if we keep them together and measure their success over a longer horizon, you'll see continual improvement. A team focusing on continual improvement will sometimes try something that uh, temporarily makes them worse, and that's okay. It's how the team improves over the long term that matters. I guess it's trial and error. In a way, they teach us to fail early, fail often, and to do those things. I think it's so incredibly important for us to keep trying. It's not how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get up, right? I don't, mind, I don't, I don't ever find myself frustrated by temporary setbacks due to an experiment. Those happen. But what does frustrate me is when teams no longer have an interest in trying to improve, when they lose that light, when they lose that vigor. I'm on a team I like trying to get better just to see if we can. Here are some things that you can try if you encounter a team that's just given up on improvement, if they're stopped altogether. Number one, and this is a common, common symptom, by the way, hold regular retrospectives. Encourage team members to reassert their commitment to holding a retrospective at the end of each and every sprint you know, or no less than once a month. Oh my goodness, they need to do it more often than that. Some teams forego retrospectives with the attitude that whatever a team member notices is an opportunity to improve, they'll share it when it happens. This rarely works because there are usually more pressing needs at that time, and the improvement idea gets put aside until another time, and it never comes to pass, right? So a dedicated time to discuss improvements in each sprint works way better than discussing ideas as they're conceptualized. 100%. Number two, focus the team on improvements that they can make. Don't perpetually ask the team to fix the impossible or to boil the ocean or even the improbable. Team members will become frustrated, understandably so, when they raise an issue again and again and again in retrospectives, but the situation remains unchanged. I'm going to throw another iron in the fire here, Mike. I also see when teams do identify a problem in retrospective, uh, it gets you know queued up, and then for the whole next sprint, they forget it even exists. And at the next retrospective, they select a new goal without even addressing the issue that came up from the previous retrospective. It it amazes me how many organizations just have retrospectives for the sake of having retrospectives, and then uh, give up on you know fixing or correcting or making any types of corrective action. The example he gives: if a new team member is needed, but you've been told there's no budget for one. Don't bring it up every single retrospective. Instead, put a reminder in your calendar to ask about it again in a few weeks or a few months, whatever's appropriate when a new budget line comes through, right? Okay, coming in next, attempt only a few improvements at a time. This is another one that I think is toxic. I went into one organization and I asked them about their improvements, their backlog, and they showed me a list of about 117 things that they wanted to improve. While I think that's mighty aggressive and mighty impressive that they identified all these things they want to change. 
No one in the world has been known for changing 117 things simultaneously and walking out alive or successful. It just doesn't happen that way. You need to limit the scope of what you're trying to change. Don't try to improve too many things at once. Retrospectives are a great, great way to generate tons of improvement ideas, but a team could be really easily tempted to take on all of them simultaneously or try to. Just don't. Instead, have team members agree on one to three things, if they're all small, that they will make serious efforts to improve in the coming iteration. Create zero-point backlog items and put them in a backlog. Make them visible. Make them out there. Let the whole world see what we're trying to work on, and the team will have a much better chance of engaging and getting those things done. And finally, choose improvements people are ready to make. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this too, where you know leadership says, I think we should improve this, and it's something that the team's not even prepared to take on. You should encourage team members to select only those items that they sincerely wish to fix. Uh, I once worked on a team that they thought they should do code inspections. Every retrospective, they agreed they'd start, but they never did. I encouraged them to admit, to admit that it was not something they were really ready to change or do, and instead to focus on changes that they were really deeply willing to make. When we made that shift, we saw that these teams dramatically improved because they didn't feel like they were being asked to do something that they did not want to do or that was improbable for them to succeed. The best teams are the ones that are willing to try new things. Encourage this mindset. Have the teams reflect on their process. Experiment with possible improvements each and every iteration. Find the little things that you can change and find the best way to succeed with Agile. What I can tell you is that this is incredible advice, and I wholeheartedly agree with it. I feel like teams and organizations sometimes struggle so much to improve because they're trying to do too much at once. Don't try to bite off more than you can chew. What's the old adage? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? Find those little bites. Find the little things that you can change that have the biggest impact and make those changes. Another idea is don't be afraid to create a change backlog. If your team comes up with plenty of ideas in a retrospective, record them somewhere. Create a change backlog, an Excel sheet, a simple way to do it. And then if the team ever gets stale or they can't think of an idea of something they want to change, you can always go back and revisit this change log and see what things were thought of before so that the team can focus on continual improvement and get better each sprint. Thanks, Mike, for continuing to send these emails over to me. These are incredible, and I love using them as part of my podcast. If you have a topic you want us to jump on, let me know. Learn more at AgileDad.com. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.